Yo, yo, uh, two seconds, just making sure I have everything ready. What's happening? Let me grab the reference. Oh no, no webcam. What does that mean? There it is. <gasps> Yo. Okay. So, let's see here. Get my notes up. Ha, <laughs> I'm like, let me get my notes up. I pull this tab up, this face. <laughs> that face. <sighs> um, okay, so today, Today we're going to be continuing on the, uh, the low poly props and getting all those pieces ready. Dude, look at this. Someone made it. Awesome. But before we do that, <laughs> before we do that, um, we're going to look at pre-production and um, I got a request. I forgot who sent it. Someone emailed me a request uh, to ask how I planned out the scene and then how I'm using Modo to transition into Unreal. So I'm gonna go through like kind of like the early pre-production phase of like how you go from picking a concept, saying this is this looks fun, I wanna make this, and then how do you approach like even starting something that can be as daunting as this this concept. Um, let me see if I can find more. So if you didn't know about this, if you grab and drag images, you can search for the image by dragging it on top of itself in the uh, search bar. Uh, let's see here. Main reason I'm doing this is I want to see if I can find a large version of it. it looks like it's the largest one. Oh, also shout out to, I don't know who it was. Someone tipped me some money. <laughs> Thanks means means so much super cool keeps this stuff going uh, how's everyone doing in chat I didn't say hi to you reads what's up uh, Hamatech or Hamadeck why is it tech I don't know uh, welcome face melt it was you it was face melt it was you thanks for the uh, the hosting as well super cool I wish there was something on OBS that told me how many people are watching I have to like look at my my actual stream to see. Okay, so as far as pre-production goes, pre-production is the phase where you're essentially planning everything you're going to do during production or like when you're actually creating the content. Um, so if you look at this scene, let me get my Wacom, two seconds. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna open this in Photoshop. Woo! Photo poo, where are you at, Photo poo? How's everyone doing? Chat's a bit quiet. Just 
chilling, just chillaxing. Whoa, what? Great Photoshop. What is this? Whoa. No. There we go. All right. We can grab the other images too while we're at it. My eyes are bleeding. No. Uh, before the image matching search, there was these. These are pretty small, but they're also they're also good. So we'll grab that one. It's funny. You think I'd have these in my folder? I probably do somewhere my uh, reference folder. All right, turn those off for now. Okay, so I saw this image, man, I don't even know how long ago it was. Reprogram 20 keys, oh my gosh, that sounds like moto heaven. So I decided, I think it was 2000, 14 or not even that maybe 13 I had seen this concept and was like oh man this looks like a challenge I need to accept right scale is cool the atmosphere it's really nice it's pretty moody there's a there's a really good focal point like right here so that's really cool so like all right well now that I've decided that I want to do this what does that mean what does that mean for us? Just pick a good color that we can, green's probably not the best since everything is like super. Ugh, I hate, I hate using red for this type of stuff, but we're doing it. Why can't I new layer that? There we go. Okay, so I can move, yeah, cool. All right, so now, now deciding that this is cool, I gotta think about what makes the, the in pre-production super nice if you can get a concept art really, really early on, which in the game industry tends to be rather rare. Um, but in the case of being at home, you can pick, you know, you can pick what you wanna make. And thankfully the concept art is already existing. Um, so what is making this concept art really cool is this focal point here. Um, and all these materials, you see like there's vines on the ground, there's like all these, there's bricks, there's this statue guy here. Um, when you do a, I also do this too, if a concept is quite dark, just crank it up so you can start seeing what they're doing. And then when you need to, you can just lower the opacity of this. So we'll just kinda, we'll put it somewhere around here. All right, so now you can see we've got what looks like um, this trim stuff. We've got this piece here. That's coming out. I'm just shift clicking. Don't worry about like drawing poorly or anything like that. Um, just, just get some of the shapes out. Looks like there's an overhang here. So basically we're just trying to break down, we're trying to break down what this scene looks like. It looks like there's a skylight here of some sort. I think in my current scene, I don't have that built in. We could fake that though. We could, maybe we can put a really bright light, shine that down. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We've got some like rubbly stuff here. We've got plants there. There's the little insets. They actually don't have statues in those ones. There's statue here. There's no statues in these. You've got this focal. So you have the focal point, which is a statue is Looks like it's protecting what the interest is, is this, this thing here. Important, important arrows. Uh, light is coming down from there, from there. Let's see, what else are we seeing? We see a face here, 
a face here, face here, lots of vine tree stuff. Looks like an egg. It does look like an egg. That's awkward. Uh, roots. Lots of roots. Roots are probably there. Because uh, this, judging by the way this concept art looks, this concept artist is uh, very uh, game centric. So he's already understanding you need the focal point. You need like these, these roots are probably here to like guide the player towards that, towards this podium which has these steps here. So you're just, yeah, you're just breaking this stuff down. You're just thinking about like what, what you're gonna need to build. Looks like there's a little window way back there. Pretty far back, you can tell just because of the, the darkness and the atmosphere. There's another window here, so maybe this is like a, maybe this is, this continues across like this. Looks like there's a supports here. There's double windows there. It's so kind of like just trying to piece it together, thinking about how it's all there. Let's see here. <laughs> fear, fear, buddy. Hey, how you doing? I need to mute my phone. It's like vibrating. How do I, why, how do I silence you? Do not disturb for two hours, there we go. Um, okay, so we've kind of looked at most of the scene just overall, like we're thinking, okay, there's steps here. That's actually steeper than how I have it built out right now, which is like you take those liberties, right? You kind of think about how how you want to build it as well, because it's the it's the freedom of being able to do whatever you want. That's the that's the joy of making art at home once you're a professional. Is now you now you don't have to follow the art direction of the game you're working on. And and stuff like that. There's also this giant hole here. I'm sure you can see it. Quilly Willy, what's up, man? You should post your stuff in here, uh, Quilly, if you want. It's Mr. Ben Wilson. That's right. I said your name. You're screwed. Oh, man, that is bright. So sorry. We'll invert this, and then we will make the background black. Why is it? Why? Why is there noises? What is happening? Okay, so this sketch, you can tell for sure that like this, this one was for the artists. This one's like trying to break down what it, what was doodled. <laughs> Not nah, crap. Come on, come on, Quilly, Mr. Willy. So a lot of what I blocked out goes off of this sketch. You see there's this round disc here. Whoa, that is not the color I want, hang on. So uh, Ben, since you just got here, we're talking about pre-production and how to break down concept art into something that's that we can use uh, when building a scene. So you can see we've already got that uh, the trim stuff that I've been working on down here. So you got to figure out how you're going to how you're going to break that apart. We've got these things, which I don't know what they are. They're like. They're like floating, they're like pillars, but not really, like they're not there to like support anything. So they must be representative. You've got this ring thing here, all this rubble, which looks like maybe something from here fell, fell this way. 
like man, make it not look like a phallic object. Um, pillar, pillar. There's more of that trim stuff. There's some stairs here. There's a platform, more stairs. So with all that being known, we're gonna lower the opacity on that a bit and then make a new and color yellow. Yellow. All right, so how should we build this stuff? Uh, if I just say, man, that is weird. None of my hotkeys are working. How would you build this stuff? Well, you've probably seen in the in some of my other videos now, but like thinking about this in chunks like that makes it much easier to deal with, right? And if you can if you can modularize a lot of this makes it much easier to to build. So you can see this is where I started getting my my pieces, and then you, as you're blocking it out in uh, in Moto and bringing it into Unreal, you just kind of stand in front of it and ask yourself if it feels right scale wise. Once you have all of this in place, you just start like what I normally do is I start uh, I build this main area here. Maybe it's not even this detailed. Maybe it's just square, right? this big space here. And then I just start dragging pieces out uh, that I'm making in Moto. And I usually stick to, um, like a, I'll pick a measurement that feels right. So if we go back to this guy, oh, rage. Uh, if we go back to this guy, you can see how spaced out these are. What's happening? No, no. Oh, I know what's happening. There we go. All right. So you can see these are pretty, these are relatively spaced out. So I'm guessing maybe like, maybe you make this piece. Let's go with like five meters, right? What's up, Luke? How you doing? Let's go with five meters. So for that length, we'll, we'll make something that's We'll go with a five meter stretch for that, and then we'll do a 90 degree turn for the corner piece here. We'll think about the top being there because it's easier to, uh, like if you can imagine this is top down right now. It's easier to, um, like so here's, here's past the plat, past the, uh, the railing here, this edge there's like all of this ground here. So it's easier to terminate the texture of this ground if there if it goes under or into a cap, which is why I ended up making a top piece to this, the top piece of this set. So with, with that in mind, then you can just, you can terminate this flat uh, ground plane into that and hide your texture seams, if you wanna call, if you wanna call it that, it's just sneaky, sneaky hiding of stuff. Um, After going with that, I felt like I had enough to to start building, like the block out pieces. Like at, at work, we call these, uh, what's up, Fat32Dutch? That name, feeling it, <laughs> feeling it. What's up, Fat? Yo. So knowing, knowing some of these pieces, then we go, we go into Moto. Let me get Moto going. And we'll talk about kind of the early steps of like how you get stuff blocked out moto, getting it into Unreal, and then starting the whole like uh, snapping process, making sure that these modular parts snap together. So, you can, you can do this in all types of ways. You can have multiple Max Maya Moto files. And you can just start building the parts. 
Remember the grid and measurement is key. So Moto, when you zoom in and out, you can see the uh, the grid is scaling, which most of the time I feel is, is really good. Uh, other times it is completely annoying and I wish I could just, like if I could lock this grid to like one meter grid, so every, every square is a grid, uh, one meter. Every grid square is one meter. Like if you zoom in a little bit, now it's now it's 500 millimeters per per square. If I could just keep it keep it there, that'd be nice. Anywho, we block this piece out, which basically I I know that I need this top piece here, right? So this is going to be the top. And you're going to remember this is just the block out, so detail's not too important here. You're just thinking like broad. What's up, Punky? Uh, you're thinking broad shapes, so like these guys don't even really matter. Let me just grab these guys. They don't matter. So you're like, okay, well we need we need those insets as well. And this is where I start to I think I diverge a bit from the from the concept. So in here you can see uh, there there's dots there, just like in the the block out that I do later. Uh, there's this opening, but there's no there's no like base to it. Man, there's a lot of debris in here. We're gonna have to do a a serious debris pass, which is gonna be fun. Ben will Ben will like that. Uh, so not knowing, man, that's interesting too. There's all this. Well, I might have to add that. Hmm. Anywho. Block this out, and usually I just start with the cube. You go the length of five meters because we're gonna we're gonna work with the five meter. No, you can set the grid size to be fixed in the snapping options. What? Hang on. Okay, I have the snapping options on the other screen. Where is it? Uh, mode. I don't see it in here. Am I missing it? Fixed increments one meter. Oh my God. Learning things every day. Boom, check discord. Where, where are we at here? Force fix, dude, you just, you guys just blew my mind. Amazing, okay. Game is, the game has changed. All right, so in case anyone using Moto doesn't know this, <laughs> you just click on the uh, snapping here, but if you uh, alt click on it, you get options. If you grab the top bar, you can pull it away and it'll just kinda, it'll stay. Then at the bottom here, it's usually set to uh, none, and the grid just scales with you. If you set it to uh, fixed, then you can type in increments. Oh man, there's fixed snapping, um, snapping angles. Uh, I don't even use Moto, get out of here. You, you. Anywho, all right, cool. That is, that is freaking great. So now the, the grid is force fixed, right? Yes. Oh, so good. All right, so I usually keep this up on my other monitor because whenever I'm building stuff, I usually snap, uh, snap to grid, vertex, edge, and just turn these on and off. Sometimes I do polygon center, which is really nice. Anywho. All right, cool. Oh man, you guys are awesome. Things you know. Yeah, I've only been a moto for like two and a half years. Only. <laughs> uh, so we've got this object sitting at five meters long. The height is just kind of a rough estimate of like what we think. If you need to measure stuff, you can come up to uh, the top left here and I believe, where is it at? In view, there's a dimensions tool and you might not be able to see it, but it'll tell you like this is two meters tall and this is one meter out and lengthwise. 
You can even grab by vert and it'll just, yeah, so that's five meters. How long have I used Google in comparison? Oh God, don't you, don't you dare. Uh, <laughs> so, measuring tools, super good. Those are, those are here, dimension tools. You can also use a ruler tool, which is really good. Uh, it's not as robust, but like, you can have it snap. Oh yeah, now, see now the snapping is an issue. Because I need it to just snap to what is happening. Oh God. No, nothing's working now. We're staying with that. Anyways, that ruler thing, you can snap to verts and edges, so. Because now you guys make me all hot and bothered. I can't handle it. All right, so good thing to note when making a snapping modular set is that the corner that you want to snap to, and in this case, it's gonna be this front, front left vert, you put that at origin. It's a pretty basic concept. Uh, it leads to keeping things super, super organized. Uh, where are we at here? So you can see this one is also snapped at that corner. So anything that meets that corner, you got the, the turn, this guy. And what else do we got here? Yeah, it's just, it's just these three. Oh, it, sets, it sets easy. So as long as they fit that, when you import it into Unreal, which I don't have open, open that up. That would have been embarrassing. It's already embarrassing enough, man. So you can see uh, when you drag the, when you import the object in, now you've got, we'll go on lit. When you drag the object in, now you've got the, the snapping or the pivot of the object at that corner point. So as long as that's consistent between everything, when you uh, start snapping to the grid, which you can scale up and down with a bracket key, these things will, move around on the home oh man I'm like trying to use moto controls in here they'll move around snapping on the same grid and sometimes they take some some work if uh, something was off that grid value to begin with um, you can see too I, I brought in the block out that I had done on uh, Tuesday Got this block out mesh. Let me move these. See, this one's off. They are on the same grid though, so you just have to scale it. Do you guys know if there's a way to inherit the grid value of an object? Because once, once you have this lined up, then um, when you scale this up, they will all snap together now, which is super nice. I wonder if I have like lit. Yeah, these are all going to be dark because now they have light maps. But yeah, you can see like everything is snapping together. So with that in mind, you can kind of go crazy. You can build all types of modular sets. Like with the inverted, the convex and concave corners, you can just flip it around when you need to. And I built this whole perimeter off of that. And then I think... <laughs> How's life? Life's good, life's good. How are you doing, English gentlemen? I don't know, Ben, do you remember English Gentleman from, um, from our uh, division streams? Anywho, I made these stairs follow the kind of same, like it's got a pivot on the side there, that way I guarantee that it's going to snap to the, uh, 
the set the same way. And then the width of it, I think, is also five meters. That way we got five, five, 10, 15, 20, and then we have the rest here, which I've moved over here. And with that, I mean, you've already got, I mean, you're building out a lot of information pretty quickly. And then this at that point can be just a, a plane with a, it's divided up really nicely. Ah, fear. That's how you, that's how you screw the, the consumers, man. Or not the consumers, that's how you screw me. How am I supposed to get my sense of, of currency? <laughs> A cent here, or a cent in U.S. It's like, what is that? It's like eighteen, it's like point nine eight crowns or something like that. Or no, no, that's completely wrong. Don't listen to me. Math. Ben knows math is not my strong point. Uh, yeah. So I built all of these off kind of that same kind of mindset. These bottom caps I'm using again here. Then I just put a pillar on top of that and it just building parts uh, back here I'll buy you 10 neck one day and make up for it nice no you don't have to do that <laughs> 10 like 10 necks like our, our go-to Thai food every Friday delicious delicious Thai food so if you look at this that is its own piece and then these are their own pieces. So if I make this one, these should all look. The downside is these will all look identical. So I'll have to do things on top of these to make sure that they don't, to make sure they don't, uh, they don't tile and duplicate. And then these are just giant block out meshes for now because I'll figure that out as I get to them. But this is like, this is the block out phase. Uh, you would say that like this is like a request, like a prototype shape. And uh, what are we at here? And this corner piece with all of its beautiful light maps, this would be like uh, a request or like a, a detailed out pass where you start to figure out where the shapes and details are at. Then after that, then it goes into like actual production of creating this stuff. What's up, Hannah? Welcome. Uh, you can see here I've got the ring inset as well. As far as making this centerpiece guy, let's uh, let's look at that guy. One cent is about eight or what is what is that? <laughs> what is that? Okay, so here's the tree. Oh God, where's the faces? Aha, there they are. Okay. Born. Is that the scent of uh, the crown? So this thing is super blocked out. There, there hasn't been much thought put into this thing at all. I will try and straighten this out a little bit so you guys can understand what, what you're looking at. It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. So... Wow, dude, it's like I'm in Unreal with this, this snapping thing. That's amazing, okay. Yeah, it exists if you use card. Uh, so I built this shape because looking at the concept, it can't all be the heads like it has to be there has to be stuff that was holding the heads up and while I can't see it I just need to fill like what my day has clearly been made like grits ah, this is crazy uh, so that volume inside of the heads needs to be filled like it, it just can't be that tree and the roots and stuff so I made this piece, then I made a block out for a face, and then brought that face into ZBrush and did some like super rough sculpting, dynameshed it down, and placed it on here. 
Uh, once I placed it on there, I just kind of rotated it into place where, like I was looking at the, was looking at this and then trying to figure out how much the heads were actually rotated. Then, with those in place, uh, we look at this. This thing is crazy for sure. So I made this. I did not draw that concept art. That'd be amazing. That concept art was made by a guy named John Park. Guy's badass. Uh, I believe, I believe he works for Naughty Dog. Because sometimes concept artists, or a lot of the times, they're they're, they're just given requests and then they make the concept and they send it. All right, so made this piece, right? And I made that using uh, this, holy God, hang on. All right, there we go. Okay, so I made this piece using the tubes tool. So you just click points down. In the recent Moto, Moto 10, which I think is the one I have now, uh, they made this live so the splines don't go away, so thank God. Best blinds, in, best blinds in the industry right now, 3ds Max. Very, very good splines. Cause see, once I'm like, all right, yeah, no, this looks good. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna give it maybe some more sides, more segments. I'm gonna make it a little thicker. And you're like, cool. And then you hit spacebar, and the fucking spline's gone. That's cool. I didn't want to change that ever again. No, never. Anywho, you deal with it. You deal with it. So with this all said, and I'm trying to remember how I, I think I did snapping the polygon. So with snapping a polygon, we just start dragging this guy out. And we're like, okay, well, the radius needs to go down. Turn snapping off. You can turn snapping on and off with X. So whenever you need to push stuff in, just kind of do this. Half the time I didn't have the snapping on. It's it's usually uh, for the initial initial look and feel. And a lot of the time I'll just do that and then grab these and position them. Get them to look right. I'm like, all right, well, I want this one to go over here. Maybe I need, maybe I need a point here. Have this go in. So you just keep doing that, hitting spacebar, doing it again and again and again, and then start large, do the primary shapes, and then shrink it down, and just keep shrinking it down. Look at areas where maybe it's like not enough. We've got a few tiny ones here, these ones, and you see they just kind of end inside. Uh, the other thing is I have the floor in place, so I kind of get like an idea of the footprint of the pit. So the pit was blocked out here. And then I just kind of make sure the vines don't really penetrate into the floor very much. It's kind of an elegant solution. <laughs> Not really. Roger reads. Roger. Roger restarted computer. Over. Um, then I took this piece. Here, we'll just, we'll just do it. Let's export selected. Export this out as an OBJ. for ZBrush, which I think I already made, which is this one. Okay. And we will open up ZBrush, and I will show you how I do that. How you guys doing in chat? Just chilling? Laughing at me? <laughs> I'm laughing at me.
Come on, ZBrush. Fade in. Yes. Do my bidding. Ben likes that. He likes it when I say intense things like that with my deep voice. Right, Ben? I'm like, where did I save that? I actually have no idea. <laughs> Mostly laughing, but chilling. Yeah, just chilling. Chilling, giggling at an idiot. <laughs> All right, so we've got this document now. I'm gonna say new document just so we have a bigger canvas to work with. Now we've got this mesh, right? Uh, let's see here. There's some of them that, um, I'll, just for demonstration reason, reasons, I won't do it, but there's some of these that I separated out because I didn't want them to Dynamesh into the other piece. But now that I've got this, you can see the wireframe too. It's it's pretty even, like you could divide this, but we want most of the stuff up here, we want to melt into itself. So we use the same stuff we've been using on the uh, on the stones from the previous episodes. We just dynamesh it. So let's say Let's say we want 2 million polys. This might take a minute. And press that. Oh, it's already done. Okay, cool. So now if you look at it really closely, they've kind of melted together. You see the, all this stuff is geometry wise has been melted together, which is super helpful for what we want to do. So turn the wireframe off. And if you just make your brush pretty big and you smooth it, you can just, you can go pretty intense with the smoothing. And you can see, minus some weird stuff in here, which we'll have to clean up, leave the top alone for now. You just start smoothing it out. Once you've smoothed out enough of this stuff and you're you're thinking, alright, this looks this looks pretty good at the We'll, we'll, work, we'll work on this trunk a little bit just to see what we can do with it. Ruined! Ruined! Let's... Fill, fill these little holes in. Don't mind the uh, harsh looking. So you can do that, clean those up, and then just run a redynamesh on there. Should recalculate the surface. Then you can just go in and smooth those out. And now the geometry should be much cleaner. Let's see. Now with all of that said, you can just kind of sculpt on the surface. So this is where this is where I will eventually start taking this the tree in the sculpting process. And I'll probably need to be looking at a, a lot of reference uh, how, of how these trees actually form, like in the way that the uh, surface of the trunk is. Trying to find the right brush, hang on here. So we just, you can just build up, build up the shapes. And don't worry about it looking squiggly and it's whatever. Maybe this, maybe this shape will go over the top of this one and then under this one. So we do stuff like this. And then when you're, when you're feeling pretty good about it, you just start blurring it out. Then you can use things like, what do we got here? 
Is this gonna? No, that's just a drag out. I'm like, where's the, where's the, this cutting tool? Is it this one? Yeah. So you can do stuff like this to emphasize shapes. And you, if you hold down Alt, you can invert it. And that's kind of like, that's, that's the beginning of how you start approaching this stuff. And don't be afraid to just like, just save and then just go crazy with it. So that's kind of how you get started on this this tree stuff, at least with uh, if you want to be sculpting it. And then uh, yeah, and then we'll be sculpting the uh, faces eventually as well. Welcome back, Reeds. You may have missed uh, a bit of the ZBrush stuff. Uh, definitely go back and and look at that if you're curious about how I'm how I'm doing the the tree. I'm using a Dynamesh process for, if you're curious, the same stuff that we were doing for the bricks, or the stones, rather. Man, we've already been talking for almost an hour about this stuff. You guys, you guys sick yet? I might, after this, I might just go into, like, super concentration mode and just answer any questions. Uh, do you guys, I guess we're, we're in a good point now. If you guys have any questions, let's just, let's go through those. You, uh, you build out the low poly for uh, baking? Um, yeah, yes. Uh, there are some really cool tools you can use for low poly stuff. Uh, let's say, let me see here. So this was the initial sculpt uh, that I dynameshed down, or decimated down in ZBrush. Wicked cool, wicked cool, bro. Super sick, dope. Uh, so I di uh, decimated this mesh down from whatever I created in uh, ZBrush the first time around, just to get something that I can put into Unreal that won't crash it because it's super high poly or something. Uh, but let's say that this is the high poly mesh, right? We'll copy that and we'll make a new scene so I can just work on a blank canvas. And what do we got here? That? So in Moto, there are some really nice retopology tools. So we're in retopology now. I've got the mesh in the top, top right here. This is the actual tree mesh. And then you want to make another mesh, which will be the low poly on top of it. Uh, the, what is it. The mesh on top will look, in the topology window, will look at the mesh below it to uh, figure out what to do. And you, you've probably seen a bit of it, like when I'm, when I'm doing this stuff. And it's looking at like the, the shape of the tree, or the shape of the mesh under it rather, sorry. And this is a bit tedious, but in certain cases, it's like the best thing you can do. Especially if you wanna do like a real-time tessellation and stuff on it later. You're gonna want you're gonna want this to be pretty nice in the quads, and you're not gonna really get it in the right manner if you're if you do it in some automated form. Uh, I'm going to texture this thing, Ben. I'm gonna texture it in Substance Painter. I think, I think we will see. I'm I'm going to try and use an approach where I unwrap it in a way where all the UVs are directional. And I'm gonna see if I can use a multi-layered, uh, what's up binary Latin? Uh, I'm gonna see if I can use a layered shader approach from the new stuff that Substance has been working on, the Substance guys, uh, algorithmic. I'm out of coffee, this is, this is terrible. This is, 
I don't know. I've got this water here. I don't know how long this water's been here. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. So, let's let's look at some other cool things you can do. This this thing's crazy. This I actually blows me away. So there's a contour tool where you draw planes or like a, a line through it and then it does like a uh, it draws a spline contouring to the shape of the object that it cut through. Long live the tea. <laughs> I'll throw it in the water, man. I will throw it in the water. So you can control segment count. So if you start lowering this, right? We don't want it curved anywhere, we want it linear. So we can think about it like it's geometry, like uh, low poly. So you can see how it's actually doing this. So turn it up just enough to main maintain the shape. You're like, all right, so 29, 29 birds. Okay, you still have this tool. You haven't pressed spacebar, so it's not dropped. Just hold shift and drag again and it will rerun the operation on a new slice. So we've got this one and this one. Uh, where are we at? So if you press F2, you can get to your modeling window pretty easily. There's a bridge command, and you can bridge between these two groups. Now, it's not always perfect, and you're probably gonna have to do some cleanup sometimes, but this might actually work out pretty well. So we click bridge, click the background, you can see it's already it's doing weird stuff. It's trying it's twisting so that it can connect them. So what you want to do is add segments, and then you want to uh, slide the twist around until the twisting goes away, like so. Uh, let's see, segment wise, we could probably let's put the segments at seven. Hit spacebar. Now you kind of like you can see there's still some some areas that are sticking out on the side here. Um, you just grab this mesh, uh, smoothing. You just smooth it. Hit the smooth command, and it'll start trying to conform. You can also just use the topology tool and just start moving edges and faces around and it will recorrect itself and you can get the contours that you want and like I strongly suggest afterwards just going in and just kind of cleaning it up looking at like where things are so if you need to merge verts you can do it, do it in this in this way as well and that's kind of how can, you can do a low poly of this pretty quickly. Uh, my music stopped. Where's my? Where's my music? Anywho, this uh, this retopo tool is super good. I really like it. I'm left in awe. You'd be left in more awe if I was making something freaking amazing. Just that last drop. All right. Okay, I'm gonna lose my, I'm gonna lose it if I don't have some coffee. Be right back. I need the coffee. I'm back.
Okay, did you, uh, do you guys have any other questions? Like high poly, let me see. Yeah, so after the high poly, you build out low poly for baking. Yes, yes. Coffee's dead. It's a lie. I'm drinking black coffee right now. It's delicious. Oh, it's hot. Oh, God. Oh, God. Why? Anywho, that's, uh, that's kind of like the gist of low poly modeling. To uh to bake to bake stuff down. Uh, after the baking, yes, texturing process is next. Uh, yeah. So at that point, then you would just uh you take this guy. Maybe you grab like this this edge here. Uh, we look at the UVs. We're like, we want a new UV map. Open this up. Let's go to UVs, wrap, get this dude, whoa, it's crazy, uh, relax, there you go, unwrapped, <laughs> it could probably be straighter, but whatever, so once that's done, it's ready for baking, bake your normal maps, I could, obviously you would have like the whole thing modeled in here, right? You bake all your normal maps out, and then you take this along with your low poly mesh, your UVs, all that stuff, into Substance Painter or Substance Designer. Or if you're using like a tileable, uh, tileable bark or uh, viney texture, you just apply that to the material of this object, and then combine the normal map from the bake on top of that, and a detail normal, probably following the the original texture that you're tiling over the surface. Static mesh, huh? Interesting. I have not played with static mesh all that much. So if you right click on this, you can change type and you can change it to a static mesh. Now what's what's your what's your reason for static mesh? Substance designer bark. Oh, Ben Wilson, where you at, buddy? Ben Wilson's been doing. Uh, he actually did a Gumroad tutorial that is free. Um, on making substance designer bark. You should uh, you should link that up, Ben. If you don't, I'm gonna pull your portfolio up on the screen. You have thirty seconds and thirty seconds because it takes about thirty seconds for you to hear me say all this stuff. So now you have five seconds. Well, that's really interesting about, because I don't, I don't know much about, uh, so Moto treats static meshes differently and the viewport is much faster. Hmm. Mm, Ben's not saying anything. All right, I'm grabbing this portfolio. Two seconds. Ben Wilson, he's like the pioneer of substance substance materials that are at our work right now. He's probably doing the most experimenting on it. This one, redwood, redwood tree bark, all substance, delicious. This wouldn't really fit the style of the, the tree bark that I, I'm going to need, uh, but this is very good. It's very good. Look at that. Nom, 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 nom. Uh, I will actually, I will post his link for his, look at this one too. This one's nice. Just like a uh, mossy smooth rocks. Yeah, substance painter too. $149. Okay, so this one. There is a link to it in Gumroad. Bark porn. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy. Oh yeah, and I've got I've got this working now. I've got this working now. So good, so good, you guys are awesome. 
Let's see what else Ben's got in here. This one's really cool. Look at this material. Let's see if I can... Yeah, if you're a student, subs all the substance stuff is free now if you're a student. Anywho, I believe that this one is not substance. Ben actually took this one and modeled out the leaves and stuff and then scattered them correctly uh, in 3ds max good stuff man it's good stuff look at the uh i think he did a breakdown of uh this one too yeah there you go when you come back to this dude you had your chance you had your chance anywho all right we'll we'll quit uh embarrassing ben Ben Wilson, you're a superstar. You know what you are. You're a superstar. <laughs> it's probably the only time you'll ever hear me say something like that. Song-wise, anyways. I'll always talk about Ben being amazing. Okay. We have an hour to go. Welcome to your stream, Ben. <laughs> uh, that's so good. So good. Uh, let's, I mean, we can do the more boring stuff, I guess. I don't know. Got the trim. We need to do the platform stuff. This guy is done. Just two seconds, guys. This guy, this guy's not done. This is the one that needs to be done actually. So I think I have a file for that. Corners, this one. So before we get that going, we will close that one. Let's see. Okay, so we have this corner piece. Let's go ahead and update the other one. Yeah, face melt. Actually, I hope that helped you a lot because that was a lot of information. <laughs> uh, and it will be on YouTube probably tomorrow morning since it's a 1080, 1080 video now. It takes a little, little bit longer to uh, churn through. Just deleting these. Do these sets. Get those extras out of there just because. Okay, so with all these pieces known, let's get these. We'll do the we'll work on the concave one. Oh, I already kind of okay. Never mind. Yeah, Ben, it was funny. Uh, they were just asking about a uh, substance like. When are you going to get on the substance bark train, basically? I was like, that's funny you say that. That's hilarious that you say that. And then I pulled your stuff up. I was like, check this out. Look at this badass. This fucking guy over here. This dude. Look at him. So good. Thought the internet in Sweden was OP. Uh, it's OP for the downloading, and then the uploading is also pretty absurd, but you want to pay for it first. It's amazing if you pay for it. It's not that expensive, though. I mean, it's just a matter of, you know. My up and down, I think, is like, it's like 200, 200 or something like that. But I'm not uploading it. I'm giving it to uh, Twitch is forwarding it to YouTube for me. I think that's probably why it takes as long as it does. So my excuse is thanks, Twitch. Thanks a lot. Need to add some more music to our uh, playlist. 
Well, that's another link I need to make is a link to the playlist in the uh, in a command. Man, save a local copy? I don't have the hard drive to do that right now. Maybe later. Maybe if the stream really takes off and, and I can do it then. Yeah, or I'll just have to wait for some money. Some some paycheck. Some checkola from the workola. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if I just turned that, and brought it in like, so it like really scoops in. So basically where, uh, where this mesh ends and the next one would loop into it, now it's gonna be like, the normal will be dipping in a bit more. It should look pretty, Look much nicer. You get a. <laughs> that is a ridiculous playlist. Uh, that's that's insane. Um, by doing angles like this, like your eye, like in reality, right? If we grab this, we'll just. Do I still have Photoshop open? Yes, I do. Oh, lines. So. Oh, I've got that bug where Photoshop's really slow. So you can think about it like, oh man, I can't do it with it being this slow. Look at that. It's like super delayed. The direction that these are facing uh, will ultimately like decide when you're looking at an object how how it visually is perceived to you. And these these subtle shifts in the direction that the light bounces off of the object through the normals, uh, varying that up will greatly increase the believability of what you're looking at versus realizing that it's 3D or three-dimensional geometry. The more like boxy you stay, the more like geometric it becomes. And with more geometric shapes, it easily, easily breaks the illusion. And when you break the illusion, that's, that's like really bad. I mean, you can, people can live with it, but that's like, that's what makes games like Uncharted look so good is they're constantly like shifting angles and breaking breaking the uh, the norm of like geometric shape. What did I just drag in here? What is this one? What is this one? Oh, that's hilarious. There we go. There we go. There we go. Make sure these are organized. What are these pieces? Those don't need to be there. What is this? So face melt, this will also answer your question. We'll, uh, by getting um, this block out figured out, We'll have something to bring into Unreal, and then you can see that that process. Because with Moto, it's a bit weird, mainly because Y is facing up in Moto, and Z is facing. It's like the axes are shifted, so like Unreal looks at it with Z facing up. So like stuff comes in sideways, and you have to understand which way to rotate the object when it's coming on the import. 
When it's coming in on the import, you gotta basically make sure that it's coming in correctly. I don't have all my pieces. No. Oh man. Was it trick trick Hanka? Thank you for the tip. I'm not like popping up the alerts on the stream because I always find it really strange to, to like display the money you're getting. I won't hate on the other streamers to do it, but thank you. That's cool. You're the best. You're the best around. All right. So we need to read it backwards. Oh, you fucking... You. <laughs> I'm like, tri <laughs> uh, That was a good laugh. That's, oh man. Always making me feel like an idiot. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. We need to find this piece that's detailed out. Give me the goods, give me the goods. There we go. There you is. All right, we need. Wait, what am I doing? Oh God damn it! Everything's here. It's in the uh, it's in the convex version. <sighs> Lacey. Did I also deleted the? This one, so now I need to put it back. Uh, you haven't had a single person realize it. <laughs> that's that's funny. These guys, we're gonna grab this guy. No, but thank you, that's super awesome. Arthur, what's going on, buddy? Welcome to the stream. It's good to see you. We're streaming for another 40 minutes. Uh, just so you guys know, I will not be streaming next Tuesday. I will be in Amsterdam, seeing what all the fuss is about Amsterdam. I should probably build a... What's going on here? I just... I just mesh clean up this bad boy? Yes, I can. Whitest boy alive? I don't know about that. You will show in Discord later? Dude, paint me excited. Paint me excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to Amsterdam for like four nights. Or three nights, four days. Uh, so not too long. But September 6th, I'll be going to Prague, which is another place I've really wanted to visit. Uh, yeah, the girlfriend and I will be, we'll go to, so we're going to Amsterdam this weekend, and then September, early September, we'll go to Prague for like seven nights. It'll be super cool. I uh, worked on the Prague map for fours of five, so I know like Old Town really well, just by like 3D scans and all that stuff, and tons of Google map, like street view, God, endless street view. Uh, yeah, so I'll be, 
I'll be there. I'll be there for, because I'll be there for uh, seven nights, you will probably not get a stream from me for a little while during that time. So sad. So sad. It's all good though. We all gotta take breaks sometimes. a little bit. It'll make it easier for uh, the Dynamesh to do its magic. So what I'm doing is I'm just selecting all, uh, the edges of all the verts that I want to merge together and then control backspace will merge them all. We'll do that if we wanted to, I guess. Snap these up, grab those to merge verts. Yeah, that'll be cool, Luke. Visiting stuff, traveling the world, man. Do it. We'll do it while you can. And then Christmas time. I don't know what I'm gonna do for Christmas, but uh, we'll have. We'll have more vacation time still, so. The amount of vacation you get in Sweden is crazy to me. As an American, it's insane. It's great though, I like it. Makes you wonder why we don't take vacations in the US. What is this? Probably like that in the other one. Hang on here. Yes, it is. There we go. Just hiding and unhiding things. Don't mind my piano playing. So I don't think there's actually room for this piece. We're gonna have to move it to the other side. Sweden. I like the vacations. They're good. They're good. What do we, how many days do we get? 25 days or something like that? A vacation? No, Reeds, uh, what I'm doing right now is actually blocking out uh, the parts that I will bring into ZBrush to go to Sculpt City on. But I guess you could also call it the uh, like detailed blockout stage because we'll we'll bring this into. Um... Oh, that's not as exciting. Hang on here. We'll bring this into Unreal so you can see the the importing process. Let's just duplicate this. Tilt that a bit. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Go. Glorious. 
Glorious. Wait a tick. Stuff's not. Hang on here. Move this back a wee bit. So that all the trim is relatively the same. You don't want it sticking out too far. Who knows though, we might not get to the uh, the Unreal part. I don't know, maybe, what is it? It's 9.23 now? We're moving relatively fast. Oh, you want to become a writer of some sort? Awesome. That sounds cool. I support this decision. My, my buddy, uh, Noel Walling, he's a writer. And uh, Bruce, Bruce Kelly, also a writer. Those guys are awesome. That's a skill I, I don't have. I don't know if I'll ever have that skill. Let's see if we can't bridge this for now. So we need to figure out how this is gonna turn into its into itself. This is Ben, this is where I wish I had had the uh, symmetry tool or symmetry uh, modifier that um, Max has. That that thing is like the only thing I truly, truly miss. It's so powerful. Wait a tick, what's happening here? Practice for days. So looking at this, the way that this actually blocks out the corner piece in here, this is gonna get really weird. How to solve this, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I just take, I guess I just take this part do this, and this part. Move that. Oh, that's weird. Oh, I know why it's kind of weird. This needs to be, so remember uh, in our modular set, the the face facade details, that's these these faces. Uh, on, the, on the end of both sides, the facade cuts in half. So we need to make sure that we follow that pattern. And when this was here, it was not following that pattern. So like if the next piece were to snap on, it would snap on with like the, where are we at here? Is it alt? Like where the snaps happen. Pull this guy out, duplicate him. Uh, where the snaps happen, the it's divided. The textures are divided. So like, if they weren't divided, this is what it would look like if I were to model it, this next piece. It would just, yeah, it would be wrong. <laughs> It'd be wrong, it'd be all wrong. So we need to fix that. Whoa, what is that button? That's horrible. Why would you push that button? <laughs> I don't know what that is. So we're gonna duplicate and mirror. Uh, we're gonna
in a mirror with no angle. We just have a flipped version of it. Yes, yes. And we need the, the original blockout mesh so that we know where the end of the blockout happens. So the mirror tool in Moto, I mean, it works pretty well. It doesn't work that well though. Like the way that Max does it is just bar none awesome. Like, as far as I remember, unless it is updated, let's see here, save the file, um, mirror. Oh God, dude, if this updated, I'm gonna look a fool. You can replace source, you can invert the polygons, you can merge vertices, mesh presets. Fixed snap, pre-highlight, 2D snap, no. Yeah, they don't, ah. Brutal. They don't merge. Max, it's crazy, man. It's like some freaking voodoo shit. Sacrifice children madness going on there. Make some room. Make some room. Make some room. All right, so this piece is looking pretty good. We need to need to do this. I have no idea what we're going to do in that corner. That is really awkward. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? That piece was not fixed, so I'm just going to do this again one more time. Damn it does merge verts when you touch. It just doesn't slice and merge. So you gotta make sure they're far apart from each other or else, or else doom, doom. Think where, yeah, right there. So we have this space here. That should make for some interesting uh, solving of things. Like, what do you put there, you know? Moto is a little modern. What does that mean? Dude, Italy was Italy was dope. I just realized when I started looking at your guys's How do you choose the point of where to snap? What do you mean specifically? So like All right, I will grab we'll grab this piece for example. Cut it, make, make a new file just because it's easier to work with. Okay, so you have this mesh, right? You see, you've got your you got your axis move. You've got your the point in the middle, which I don't know what that's called. In the middle of the axis, the axi, axes. Uh, when you press X, it toggles snapping, right? So when you hit the move key, now the the box in the middle has now become like a little plus three-dimensional plus sign. Wouldn't Mesh Fusion do the trick? Mesh Fusion gets a really weird... You need to have, like, Mesh Fusion needs quadded meshes, and uh, it's it tends to smooth things. I need to look into Mesh Fusion more, but 
for the things that I'm doing, it, it will overcomplicate the situation and try and I feel like it wouldn't do what I need it to do. Uh, as far as the snapping stuff, when you press X, you can see it's turning from a cube to a plus. So when it's a plus, you hit Alt, snapping's right here. When you press X, you can see it turning on and off. If you hit Alt, you'll see it says Options. Click on that, and uh, this window will pop up. I'll close it so you can see what, what it looks like. So this pops up, drag it away. You can have it snap on. What I'm doing is I'm usually using uh, vertices and edge. And when snapping is on, you can see that uh, edges and verts highlight when I mouse over them. So as long as the action center, which is this guy, as long as the action center is set to automatic, whatever you, wherever you click, the, uh, the pivot moves to your gizmo. So with the snapping for vertices and edges toggled, when you select an edge and click, it'll snap that to that point. So with that in mind, you can like, you can just move the point to that corner pretty quickly because the snapping is pretty intuitive. So with that said, duplicate this mesh, turn snapping off, move it over here, zoom in, snapping on, click that point, click and drag it, and it'll snap to the next vert. Hope that answers your question. Snapping is not as intuitive as uh, some Maya users would like, that's for sure. Um, Maya's snapping is a bit different. It's similar in the fashion, but uh, it's pretty dynamic as well in, in Maya. Because of the toggling that we're talking about here, um, where you're like, I have to turn these on and off. So like, this is always on the other screen and I'm turning things on and off. You can't really hotkey those. And in Maya, by default, they're hotkeyed to like specific keys where you hold it down and that's what the pivot is snapping to. But the moment you let go of that, then it's no longer snapping to it. So it's, it's much more dynamic. Yeah, see, fear, fear, will, fear will kill me if I say that if Moto snapping is better. So there's that. I don't want to be killed by fear. Fear dying by the in the form of fear. That sounds uh, terrifying. <laughs> so I am not. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. This this thing's concerning, and we could do like. A, in the reference picture, um, where is it? In this one, do you remember in the corner here, there's the weird, uh, it's kind of dark on the stream, but there's the weird frame pattern. Maybe we can do that to try and soak up some of the space, this blank space. Let's see if we can. Oh God. So this is where it gets kind of like, you have to be more creative, right? How you solve these. So we're just gonna, we're gonna merge these. What do we got here? See, I need to add this merge to a hotkey so I don't have to have this up. I just have this up so I can, I'm just gonna do it. Uh, vertex merge, map to key. There we go. All right, that can be closed now. So now I can move this over here. Move it. Move it there. Move those. And wait. There we go. Okay, cool. Hockey's. Hockey's are important.
a snap for that. That might be, uh, this part might be too deep. All the sparkles. I'm just going to do this because I'm lazy. You could do macros for that? Oh man, you're you're a lifesaver. Oh, Ethereus, uh snapping stuff. Dude, awesome. Man, this is some of the older stuff too. I wonder if this is uh if this still works in the um Cool. I wonder if this still works in ten. So I remember looking at this at one point and it wasn't working in um, in 901. Dope. I'm saving that for later. It should? All right, cool. So I can macro command those to just switch on and off. Because the way, the way that it looks at it right now, if you just try and do it uh, with just what exists currently, is it it doesn't know it doesn't know what you're trying to do because you can hotkey the uh what's it called you can hotkey you can hotkey it off and you can hotkey it on but those are two separate actions so it doesn't know you have to tell it which one you're doing so it's like you'd have to hotkey it for it on and then make a different hotkey for it off but if that can do it that's awesome that's great. I will, I will definitely look into that. I'm just trying to clean this up a bit because this stuff's gonna have to dynamesh. Oops, hang on here. Right, but the macro, how do you get the macro to run through? Oh, you tell it to go on. Wait, in the macro you say on, but in that same macro you say off. I don't understand how that would, I don't know, I'm gonna have to look at it because if you're saying it's doable, then obviously it's doable, I just need to do it. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Oh no, that's brutal, man.
Yeah, we were actually talking about that at work today because uh, I work with a, a junior environment artist and he's slowly switching over to Moto. And he's a Maya user and there's some things that just irritate him. We're like trying to figure out how to how to make those work so he so he can keep using you know, so he can keep using Moto. Cause he overall he likes Moto. trying to learn something new it's it's not easy especially when especially when you already know how to do something and you're like why isn't it why I can't do it you have to find how to do it how to do it a different way sounds counterintuitive really right the main reason I want to clean this up is because you can probably use most of this to uh, build your low poly if you wanted to. Uh, oh right, shift and control shift M. <laughs> Hot keys, got to remember them to use them. watch the rest on YouTube. We don't have much time left. Uh, uh, 12 minutes. So thanks for hanging out. Uh, face melt. I'll see you, um, you know, on the next stream. Remember I won't be here on Tuesday, so I will see you on Thursday. Yeah. Tor Frick's freaking crazy. Uh, how and why do you become a 3DS artist? What do you mean? Uh, Zergio P. Is that, is that how you see your name? Welcome to the stream, by the way. Later, face melt. Oh, there's a lot of you guys in here. How's it going, everyone? People I've, I've never seen before in here. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Please follow. I wonder if I have a Twitter command in here. No, I do not. Is it add, add command, add command? No, I don't even know that. I don't remember what the line was. Uh, I'm sure uh, someone in chat will save the day. Like Hart himself. Anyways, yes, yes. Boom. Like that, the bot commands for this channel are available at slash commands or commands add uh, Twitter and then let me get my Twitter. Oh, you're magical. Like that. So, yes, you the man. Thanks, dude. Oh, yeah, the Discord. Hey, uh, do you guys have any questions about any stuff? We can go, we can do questions. Does anyone have anything they want me to look at or we can discuss something art related? Any of that jazz? I guess we can, uh, well, while I'm waiting on those questions, we've got 10 minutes. I'm going to try and grab all this stuff and see if I can't fix 
this board selected. Oh, I don't want OBJ. I need to export as a FBX. Holy command, buddy. That's it, huh? Macro. <laughs> Complete. Let me uh, get a notepad for that. <laughs> I will, I will look into that later. Thanks, man. Okay. What is it called in Unreal? The inside corner piece is called in corner, platform wall in corner. Platform wall in corner. There it is. Whoops. Hang on. I need to actually unwrap this thing. Grab all these guys. And delete that one. Delete that one. Delete this. Everything. Things selected. Do these projection orientate. Packing, packing, packing. Thanks for doing that, uh, binary. Good stuff, man. Uh, that pack should do for the block out. We don't need it to be anything too crazy. Free export selected, FBX. Uh, platform inner corner. Okay, let's see. Ben knows the struggle. I keep pressing F2 to bring up the content browser. Fear knows too. Does Discord invite works? Uh, maybe it does later here. Uh, maybe it doesn't. Hang on. Did I not make like a permanent invite here? Uh, I will be streaming next next Thursday. So not this Tuesday, not this upcoming Tuesday, but next Thursday at eight o'clock. Um, if you join the uh, Discord, I post in there, and then I also post on my Twitter when I'm about to go live. And if I have a free minute, I usually post about eight hours before I'm going to stream on Twitter. Just saying, hey, just a little heads up, I'm going to be streaming. Tune in, have fun. So we're going to re-import this mesh. And yes. We're going to lift this. Beautiful. Beautiful, just beautiful. Okay, so we've got all the pieces that we need. See all the breakup on the top? That's super nice. We still need to do the top piece on here as well. Uh, modular floor tiles. How many variants of one floor tile should you make? Um, what are we looking at here? Aha! Wait, why is that so small? <laughs> what the heck? Is that like a screenshot of like a, it's like really small. Do you have a bigger picture? I can draw over it. Mm. It just like decided to do its thing. I, that's super weird. Okay. refresh itself. I guess you just redid it. I don't know. Dude, I'm like sweating bullets here. Um, okay, so. Oh man, they're doing weird things. Just already I can see like the weirdness. Uh, let's do this.
Come on, Photoshop, be my friend. Just just hang out with me for a little bit. I'm gonna save this. We've got four minutes and then I need to go. I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut it like right at ten. So got some gotta start packing and stuff. Where where? Where? What what happened? Did I accidentally close it? I must have because I was trying to close this. All right. Okay. Uh, new layer. So, oh, interesting. We're going to do this so that it's dimmed down a bit. Mood lighting, if you will. Go with a fancy yellow. So this texture and this texture are probably the same. I don't know. You can see there's a mirror line right here. You can see how this side and this side are the same. So knowing that, they probably, let's see here. probably made this side piece and then literally mirrored the ground. Uh, this is probably floating geometry. That looks really bad for some reason. I don't know what that is. Anywho, uh, there's a wall here right here that's doing this. Uh, what they're probably doing is still, this is just going under the wall. So they're probably doing that. This is one texture. Uh, let me see. I don't see any mirroring there, so We'll just say that those are just tiling textures that they're mapping to geometry like this. Downside with this is you can sometimes get some really clean, really clean lines uh, when you're floating geometry on top of itself. So this is all a bunch of like a floating cards. Uh, so this is one material, this is material two, this one's three, this one's probably three as well. This one might be three with like a color tint on it in the shader. Uh, over here, I can't tell what that is, so we're just going to ignore that for now. Um, so there's probably three materials here. The other thing they might be doing is, so say this is geometry and this is the wireframe that we've, we've been drawing. Um, this might be wider than normal, or than, than you're actually seeing, and they have an alpha edge that they're using to actually break up the edge so that you don't see that it's geometry, like see this edge here, it's kind of wiggly. They might have an alpha that they're tiling along the norm, along the, the texture as well, along the, the geometry, to break up that edge to just kind of diffuse the geometric look, which is kind of that same approach that I was talking about where you want to vary up the angles and stuff. So it's, it's about as simple as that, I think. And then they're just literally mirroring it and snapping it to itself to create the rest of this, all this stuff. And you see this cuts in and goes down. They are, they just accommodated for it so that that happens after it switches to this texture, which is the same as this one. Uh, what's really weird is it, it switches to this so, sorry. So you would expect this material to go all the way around, but for some reason it doesn't here. It's like a separator. So I'm guessing this is like corner one of four. There's another corner over here, and then there's another one over here, and then another one right around here. My browser's derpy. All right, it is 10 o'clock, guys. I've got to roll out, but it was a pleasure as always. 
I need to get a layout where I have the webcam bigger so you can just see these eyebrows just daunting, staring you down. Uh, it was a pleasure, as always, hanging out with everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, which I believe I have a... Go there. If you sub to that, you will get all of these in VOD form in their entirety. And then usually within a day, I go into the description, description and break down the entire VOD so that you can jump around. Jump around and look at the stuff that you find interesting. That way you don't have to comb yourself and figure out what I'm talking about where. Anywho, cool. Thank you for hanging out. Dra, dra -o, and binary. Binary, thanks again for all the stuff, the macros, all that good stuff. Grid snapping, oh my god. The dream, the dream is real. All right guys, I will check you later. Goodbye.